Welcome everybody to our lesson for today, Removing Brackets. So, Removing Brackets is something you have learned in Chapter 2, and now we're going to take that knowledge and put it in into the world of algebra. So, what it's basically all about is learning and understanding the concept of removing brackets. Yes, this is Part 2 of Simplifying Polynomials, and the learning goals for today is Understanding the necessity of removing brackets in specific situations and understanding the basis of the rule of removing brackets. And two, summarizing the rule of removing brackets, which can be used to remove brackets. So you have to know that special rule that we're going to remove. So right here, do you still remember how to calculate the number of matchsticks needed when using matchsticks to build squares? So this is one of from the, one of those lessons before in those earlier lessons. Take out the prepared matchsticks and set them yourself, and then set them as the follows. So use four for the first square, and add three for each additional square. Then four plus three times x minus one matchsticks are needed to build x squares. So here's the law of removing brackets. To build x squares, the methods are used, used are different, and the formulas listed are different, but the number of matchsticks used is the same. How do you use mathematical knowledge to explain why they are equal? The algebraic formula 4 plus 3 times the difference of x and 1 has parentheses. Using the distributive law of multiplication, you can multiply 3 into the parentheses evenly, so distribute them, them in, to get 4 plus 3x minus 3. 4 negative 3 are terms that can be combined. At this, the algebraic expression formula becomes 3x plus 1. So here's a simplification. That's 4 plus 3 times difference of x and 1 is equal to, just using the distributive property, and that's 4 plus 3x minus 3. And then you can combine these two like terms right here. You'll get 3x plus 1. And the algebraic formula 4x minus the difference of x and 1 can be regarded as 4x plus negative x minus 1. And minus the difference of x and 1 can be written as negative 1 times parentheses x minus 1. So 4x minus x minus y is equal to 4x minus x plus 1. And the terms are combined to get 3x plus 1. So 4x minus the difference of x and 1 is equal to 4x plus negative 1 times the difference of x and 1. And if you simplify that using the distributive property, it's equal to 4x minus x plus 1. So that's the same as 3x plus 1. As you can see, it went back again to 3x plus 1. So we can conclude that these three expressions are equal. Now we have some discussion time. Observe and compare the changes in the horizontal lines drawn on both sides of these two equations. So this is 1. 4 plus 3 times this difference of x and 1 is equal to 4 plus 3x minus 3, which is equal to 3x plus 1. 2 is 4x minus the difference of x and 1 is equal to 4x minus x plus 1, which is equal to 3x plus 1. So think, before and after removing the brackets, so getting rid of these brackets, how do the symbols change? By the symbols, I mean, how did the negative and positive signs change? Observe this for a moment. What changed? Well, we see that, look, over here, the 3 was over here, and negative 1 was, well, negative. And after it came in, it was 3x minus 3, which is equal to 3x plus 1. Okay, so that's first. And then for the second one, at first it was, you know, in the parentheses x minus 1. And after the parentheses were removed, somehow, 
I mean, look. This x in the parentheses, you can think of it almost as a positive x. But now, over here, it's negative, and the negative 1 became positive 1. So what happened there? What's going on? So here's the rule of removing brackets. If the symbol in front of the bracket is the plus sign, then after removing the brackets, there is no change in the expression. Okay, so that fits in, in our observations here. I mean, over here, it was a plus sign in front of the parentheses. It was a plus sign. So, you know, for the each terms, their signs didn't change. Let's look at negative signs. If the symbol in front of the bracket is the negative sign, after removing the brackets, the terms inside of original brackets will become their additive inverse. So remember, additive inverse is equal to opposite number. Okay, so that's interesting. The rule of moving brackets is that if there is a negative sign in front of a parentheses, one of the terms inside of the parentheses, after the brackets are removed, they're going to switch their sign. So if, say, the term negative 3x cubed y is inside a negative parentheses, it will become, after the parentheses are removed, 3x cubed y. So you probably remember this from our earlier removing bracket lesson from chapter 2. It talked clearly about this, and it seems like it works the same way with terms. The same way it works with numbers, the same as for terms. And that makes sense, because if you think about it, I mean, you know, x and y are just numbers, but we don't know that, but it's a number. So after you simplify that, you will get something equal to 3x cubed y. And that's just a number. Anytime you come across a whole expression or a term, think it equals a number. Anything that's more and more complex in the end, it's just a number. So yes, if it's a positive parenthesis, there will be no change in the expression. But if it's negative, it will change to its additive inverse or opposite number. So now we're, we're going to have some examples. We're going to simplify the following whole algebraic expressions. I'm going to walk us through the first one, and then I'm going to leave the second, third, and fourth one to you. So let's see here. 4 minus a minus the difference of a and negative 3 and 3b. I'm first going to put that down. So 4a minus 3b. Okay, there. And then we're going to simplify. We're going to ask ourselves, is this a negative or positive parentheses? Clearly, the sign over here is negative. So that means it's a negative parentheses. Remember, right here can be a plus sign. Okay, so we can just first write down the 4a, and then we're going to remove the brackets. Let's try that. So this was a positive A, but after the brackets are removed, it's going to become a negative A. And this was a negative 3B, but since we're going to switch it to its additive inverse or opposite number, it would become 3B. So positive 3B. We're going to combine like terms, which would give us 3A plus B, I mean 3B, or Factor out the 3, 3 times the sum of A and B. Now, looking, I'm going to leave my solution up here, and you are going to go ahead and solve 2, 3, and 4 by yourself. After, you're going to come back, and we're going to go through the problems together. Okay, so after you did it, it wasn't bad, wasn't it? For the first one, I mean for the second one, we first had to remove the brackets. So that would be, well, a plus, so we first have this whole expression, and then we would remove the brackets. We see that the first parentheses 
was a positive, so we could just remove the brackets and everything and leave everything the way it is. But the second one was negative. So that means after we remove the brackets, we have to switch all of the terms to its opposite number, switching their sign. Again, I have to say that over here, it's a positive sign. So for A, it's a positive sign. And the answer for the second one would be 5A minus E. Third one, you will need to use the distributive property to factor in 3 for each of these two terms. That would give us 6xy minus 3y minus 2xy. We simplify with combined like terms, we'll get 4xy minus 3y. And 4. We have the problem, and then we're going to use the distributive property to factor this negative 2 in into x plus y. Watch. Do you know why I said a negative 2? So when you're here removing brackets, you need, I'm not sure if I had said this before, maybe I have, but you just need to view this whole thing, this whole number in front of the parentheses as a whole. So as a whole, it means that when you're going to factor this in, don't just factor the 2 in, factor the negative 2 in, include that symbol. So then, going to factor that in, simplify with combining like terms, you'll get 3x plus y. So now we have a conclusion on removing brackets. One, when removing the brackets, not only the brackets should be removed, but also the symbol before the brackets should be removed. Of course, so if you have negative or positive sign in front of that bracket, you should just get rid of that. Two, when removing the brackets, we must first find out whether it is a positive or negative sign in front of the bracket. So if there's a negative number in front of the brackets, that means that it's a negative bracket. If it's a positive number in front of that bracket, it means that it is a positive bracket. Think of it as this way. If you have just plus blah 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 as a parenthesis, think of it as plus one. One is a Bit of number, but it can just be omitted. And say you have negative blah blah blah. It could be the same as negative one times that bracket. The one in negative one can just be omitted and would just be a negative sign. Okay, so next one. When the numerical factors before the bracket, the multiplication and distribution law should be used to calculate. And do not miss the multiplication. So this is the same thing. So if you another way to remove brackets is factor that in. So factor that number before that is being multiplied, of course, to a bracket. Multiply that in, and that will also get rid of the brackets. Okay, so now we're going to have a activity, true or false. So we're going to play true or false. And we have the equalities over here, and you need to find out if they are correct, if they are correctly simplified, are they accurate? If it is correct, it's true, and if it's incorrect, it's false. So what's the first one? 3 times the sum of x and 8 is equal to 3x plus 8. No, it is false, because if you're going to remove this bracket, you need to distribute 3x in. And you're yes, you already distrib you already multiplied x by three, so that's three x. But you still need to remember to multiply the eight by three, which is twenty-four. So that would be three x plus three times eight. So the cause of error was that you use the distributive property, but you missed the multiplying the three to eight. And the second one was false. Look, negative three times the difference of x and eight is equal to negative three x minus twenty-four. That is false because after you distribute it, you need to change, because it's a negative number, negative 3, you need to change the signs of all of the terms in the parentheses. You do that for the first term, which is negative 3x, but you still will remember to add that 24. Negative 3 times negative 8 is equal to 24. Cause of error. For the parentheses, is a negative number. So after removing the negative sign and the parentheses, each term changes sign. Three. 
it's 4 times the difference of negative 3 and 2x. You're going to multiply that in, and it's false. Mostly because after you add it in, you won't need to change each term's sign because the factor, so the 4 right here, is a positive number. If it's a positive number, no signs change. So this person did it for the first one, that's negative 12. But this person actually changed the term of the negative 2x into positive 8x. But the 4 isn't a negative number, it's a positive number. So it's supposed to be negative 12 minus 8x. And the cause of error is right here. The last one. It is true. So now we're off to application of debracketing simplification. And here's example 3. Two boats depart from the same port and went in opposite directions. Ship A goes along with the current, while ship B goes against the current. The speed of both ships in still water is 50 kilometers per hour, and the current speed is 8 kilometers per hour. So here are the questions. How far will the distance between the two ships be after two hours? And two, after two hours, how many more kilometers will ship A sail than ship B? I'll walk us through this example myself. Well, we know that one goes against the current and the other goes along the current, and that the speed of both ships in still water is 50 kilometers per hour. After ships A equal B, and one is going along the current, which means adding up the speed of the current, and the other is going against it, which is subtracting the value of the current against its own speed. So here's a solution. The downstream sh speed is going to be the ship speed plus water speed, which is equal to 50 plus a kilometers per hour. And the upstream speed, which is against the current, is the ship speed minus the water speed, which is 50 minus a kilometers per hour. So that means two hours later, the two boats are separated with 200 kilometers. And watch the simplification right here. After two hours, so that would be the same as two times the sum of 50 and a minus two times difference of 50 and a added up together, which would be 100 plus 2a plus 100 minus 2a, which is equal to 200 kilometers. The second one is ship A will sail more than ship B after two hours, so that would be more 4a kilometers. And now we have some practice in class. One, after simplifying m minus n minus the sum of m and n, the result is blank. So I want you to solve all, of, all four of these problems by yourself before coming back and me revealing the answers. So go ahead and do that. So, the first one, after, after we remove the brackets, we'll get m minus n minus m minus n. Because the bracket was a negative bracket or parentheses. But then they will all cancel each other out, giving us zero. So we have to select A. Two, simplify 4x minus 4 minus the difference of 4x and 5. So after removing the brackets, we need to change the sign of all terms in the parentheses, which is 4x and negative 5. So we're going to change them, and it would become 4x minus 4 minus 4x plus 5. And after we simplify by combining like terms, we'll get 1. Third one, we're going to simplify 2 times the difference of 2x and 5 minus 3 times the difference of 1 and 4x. We need to use the distributive property to factor those values in. And remember, when you do that, you need to view this minus 3, blah, 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 as a plus negative 3. And we're going to put, distribute this whole negative 3 into it. And then you would get 16x minus 13. 4. The length of the first side of triangle is 2a plus b centimeters, and the length of the second side is 2 times the sum of a and b centimeters. And the third side is b centimeters shorter than the second side. The perimeter of this triangle is 6a plus 4b centimeters. So when we do this fourth problem, 
Well, we know that first side. So first, we know is two a plus b. Second is well, the second one is what is what does it say? It's two times the sum of a plus b. And the third one is b centimeters less than the second one, or shorter. Shorter usually means minus. So we're going to minus b, and that's 2a plus b centimeters. So after we add these up together, we will get 6a plus 4b centimeters. 5. Simplify the following expressions. So the first one is bm plus 2n plus the difference of 5m and n. And the second one is 5p minus 3q minus three times the difference of p squared and 2q. Again, simplify these expressions by yourself before listening to the answers. Okay, so the first one, all we need to do is move those brackets because it's a positive bracket. So we don't need to change anything with the signs of the terms. We just remove the brackets and then we combine like terms, which would give us 13m plus n. And the second one, we need to first factor this negative 3 into the second parentheses. After we factor it in using the distributive property, we will get negative 3p squared plus 5p plus 3q. 6. Knowing that 2x to the nth power y squared and negative 3xy n to the nth power are like terms, calculate the value of m minus in this whole expression. So calculate this. It's something really related to our first, so to the combined like terms lesson when we learned all about like terms. I'm sure you remember that. And try to solve this. Do you still remember the definition of like terms? When two terms, or actually multiple terms, have the same variables, and each variable has the same power or exponent. First, let's just say that this x over here is risen to the first power. Okay, so now we know that. Let's first check if it qualifies in the first rule. It contains the same variables. Well, the first one has x and y and only x and y, and, x and, y, and in the second one, it's x and y and only x and y. And now let's look. Are their exponents the same? Well, we can't be sure of that right now because Two of those exponents are shown as variables. But we know that they are like terms. In like terms, for each variable, they have the same exponent. So let's first look at the x's. If x over here is risen to the first power, and they're like terms, then this will have to be written, also risen to the first power. And if this y is risen to the second power, then this y needs to be risen to the second power as well. So now we know the values of m and n. m is 1, so we can just write as it as m equals 1 and n equals 2. Now we're going to combine like terms. Let's just first combine these like terms, and then we're going to substitute them in. We'll get the final answer as 2. 7. A certain store has a product with a cost of $8 per item. The original price was set as a cost increase of B dollars. After 40 pieces were sold, due to inventory backlog, it was adjusted to an 80% discount of the selling price and another 60 pieces were sold. 1. What is the total price of 100 pieces of the product? 2. How much is the total profit from selling 100 pieces of this product? So I'm going to leave these two problems to you, and then when you've got an answer, you can come back and we'll go through this together. Okay, so let's look at the first problem. What is the total price of the 100 pieces of this product? So let's first define one thing. For the original price, one piece would cost A plus B 
dollars. That would be equal to one one piece, one piece of the original. I'll just write orange. So that's original. And we sold 40 pieces. We sold 40 pieces. So then, back here, like this, it would be 40 times the sum of A and B. And because of a problem, it had to be adjusted to 80% of the selling price. So 80% of the selling price, another 60 pieces were sold. How can we express this in the language of mathematics? So the, so the first 40 pieces that were sold, that could be 40 times the sum of A and B. And after it was sold for 60, after 60 pieces were sold and each piece was 80% of the original price, that could be 60 times the sum of A and B times 80%. So, so if we're going to, if we're going to simplify this, this would give us 40A plus 40B plus 60A, 60A plus 60B times 80%. And like we're going to simplify that, so we'll get 88a plus 88b dollars. Now let's look at the second problem. How much is the total profit from selling 100 pieces of this product? Let's look at the solution. Well, we need to add 88a plus 88b dollars, and then we have to minus that 100a, which we're going to simplify with combining like terms. We'll get negative 12a plus 88b dollars. So then, selling 100 pieces of this product will make a total profit of negative 12a plus 88b dollars. Now here's the whole wrap up of our lesson today. We learned all about removing brackets, and that contains law of removing brackets and the problem solving steps. If there is a plus or positive sign in front of the brackets, then the brackets is positive, positive and could just get rid of the brackets and the terms inside the brackets remain unchanged. But if there's a negative sign in front of the brackets or the bracket is negative, then all the terms in the bracket will become their additive inverse or opposite number. Here's a problem solving steps. We're going to use a distributive property to factor number in front of the int and then we're going to remove brackets or actually these could be counting as the same thing and then we're going to combine like terms we'll have our answer here's the skills we were focusing on understanding the necessity of removing brackets in specific situations and understanding the basis of the rule of removing brackets and summarizing the rule of removing brackets which can be used to remove brackets so I hope you learned something from today and removing brackets is something we will be needing. It's one of those really basic calculation methods that you will need to understand and master before we move on. So just like combining like terms, make sure you practice a lot and you get the hang of it. So thank you for watching this video and if you haven't yet, Click the notification bell, subscribe, share, like, comment, and we'll see you next time.